Okay. Let's get started. Sorry for the delay. Welcome to the Anna Hummel Show. We have some things to discuss. Breakthroughs with trolls. Maybe dip a little into uh, my new interest of nuclear winter. Biohacking. All my favorite things. 81390 Bubba if you'd like to call in and interact with the program. I'll be here for probably the next hour or so. Uh, if you hear uh, any additional music in the background, I don't think anything will will poke through. But the boys are uh, working out in the new and it, well, I wouldn't say improved, but the 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 new newly moved uh, club gym. So if you are coming to 199 tonight, you will certainly see it. That's my only concern for it is that it's it makes a lot of sense. It's it's functional just to have it all right here, but in the event that you have guests, which we do from time to time in this building, it creates um, all that space used to be kind of like lounging space where the bullpen used to be, uh, where we used to kind of do the step and repeat for the the for Barb for those who have attended. Uh, we had an extra bathroom, the green room bathroom, where where many a woman would uh, maybe vomit, get sick. Spend a few hours in there just kind of hovering over the toilet, trying to relieve herself from maybe drugs she ingested. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but that is all gone and all the qu- equipment is there. And again, it is very cool to just have it all right here. Um, I I cannot work out just alone in a room with equipment i am one of those people and i know that sounds insane like why wouldn't you want your own gym i just i like a vibe i've always just liked a vibe i can't i can't get hard if you will so to speak if i'm just working out in the presence of no one i i need people not that i have any friends at the gym i don't i don't know a single person at my gym and i like to keep it that way it was the same for my last gym wh- wh- where I was a member for about seven years, the LA Fitness off 4th Street in St. Petersburg. And I had not one contact, no one that I knew. The only person I knew was the guy that signed me up and then he left too because they got a high turnover rate over there. So I got no contacts. Nobody says hello. There's no one to like wave to or anything. So now that I've moved, oh, Xerxes on Hummels equals over. Thank you. <laughs> Nine ninety nine. We're making money, folks. Oh, and a shout out to John Costica, who apparently was giving money on Rumble, which I should probably have pulled up. But I got a lot going on, so I'm been I've been on the tubes. But I want to thank John Costica for his contribution that he made last week, and I do want to apologize that I did not have it pulled up. So I'm on Rumble too. So if I see anything there, I will shout it out. So just bear with me. Thank you very much. We got someone on hold right now. I have a feeling I know who it is. We'll get to that call in just a moment. But as far as your the way that you like to do the gym, I would like to hear from the people. 81390 Bubba, do you like to work out in the privacy of your own home, perhaps? That was really hot by default during COVID, which did not I didn't love. I, di- I didn't like that at all because I didn't have any equipment, so I was doing these like hip body workouts. And then it would be like really awkward if, you know, my roommate came in and I'm doing some fucking weird burpee shit and just panting. Um, it's They're very effective workouts, but I just I need to be in the presence of others so that I have pressure to perform. Because once you you could always like no one sees you not do a workout at your house. Right. But when you go to the gym, like and you've entered the gym Like, people have seen your face. So if you walk in and then you just, like, walk out 90 seconds later, people are like, what the fuck? You know, there's always this, like, pressure. Like, all right, I'm here. I've been seen. I need to do something now. And then plus, I also get amped when I see other people working hard. Like, I think it's a contagious thing to look around the room and be like, fuck yeah. Like, we're getting after it. It, we We are elite because most people are not working out. They're not pushing themselves. They're not making time for the gym. 
and um, I just like to be in the press. I don't want to talk to anybody. Like, I don't do group fitness shit. I did Orange Theory one time back in 2017. Just by the way, if you're thinking about doing Orange Theory, uh, don't. Just don't do it. And not because of the workout. Like, whatever. Some people like people fucking yelling at you faster. This I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, leave me alone. I'm more of a working out as my meditation, is my therapy kind of person. I don't need you fucking yelling at me. Like, I am... I am motiv- self-motivated enough where I don't need some person who is fatter than me and in less good of shape than me yelling at me to perform better. Like, fuck you, bitch. That's how I felt. That's not why I didn't like the workout. The workout was fine. Some people like it, just wasn't for me. The problem with Orange Theory is that they will harass you. I am not kidding. I still get calls. When was 2017? Seven years ago, I took one class. They get your phone number on file. It's over, okay? Because they will call incessantly for the next two, three months to get you to sign up. And then it's periodically, it's probably about, you know, twice a year now. I still get, hey, we know you took a class. I'm like, what the fuck? In a different decade, yes, I took a class. Not interested, clearly. Leave me alone, please. So... Um, if you're if you're thinking about doing the uh, the orange theory, try it, but give a fake number like you would to the creepy guy at the bar. You know, you you want to be nice. You give a number, but just make sure that you just change the last digit or something. Or give it. I used to give out my sister's number sometimes when I would see a guy, I'd be like, oh yeah, and you just rattle it off. This was in college, and my sister, which was kind of weird, who was in high school at the time, would just start getting fucking random calls from these from these gross college men she's like what's going on i'm like i have no clue uh but it was me it was me uh 81390 bubba do you like to work out by yourself in your own gym or do you like a vibe like me a vibe but yes working out i'm i'm realizing more and more as i get older that it's not even about it is about my physical health don't get it twisted it obviously is but for me it's just such a i am even more irritable than I already am and more anxious than I already am if I don't pacify myself with a workout, which seems, you know, insane because it's hard and it's difficult, but I just feel so at peace. At certain times when I'm doing cardio, when I'm just like in the zone and I'm running or doing the uh, Stairmaster or anything, it, it is weird the kind of meditative state I get in and I start like meditating on aspects of my life where I'm like, okay, we're doing it. This is going to get better. This is going to improve whatever kind of situation I'm going through. I'm like, you are, you are gearing up for war, whatever that means, you know, becoming just a more resilient person, your body, your mind, uh, you are ready to take on anything. You can do it. And a lot of times it's work stuff, work related where I'm just like, you will, you will power through. Everything will be okay. Uh, We did have a breakthrough yesterday, and I don't know how sincere it is, but for those that missed it, I I very much recommend doing, uh, listening back to Two Live Jew. I was listening to a little bit of it yesterday, and I realized I I think I maybe overserved myself on some caffeine, so I was talking quite quickly. So I do apologize for that, because I'm like, whoa, sister, slow down, slow the fuck down. But I was, like, my heart was racing, and not because of the Longwood thing, just because um, I had way too much caffeine. And then continued to have more when I went home, so that was cool, too. But, um, yeah, I, I think I saw some things on social media regarding Mr. Mr. Longwood, so I don't know if... If the trolling from him is done, I don't think I saw anything in chat today. I oddly felt bad that I, I, this is how Jewish guilt works. You're mean to me. I call you out for being mean. You stop being mean and apologize. And now I feel bad because I feel like I ruined your good time. That's how I felt. I'm like, oh, like, God damn fuck I didn't mean to ruin his time like maybe being mean to me brought him a lot of joy and I fucking snatched that shit away from him and made him feel bad about himself now most people would say well good 
good that he should feel bad about himself for being so cruel, unnecessarily cruel towards you. I don't see it that way. I go, this motherfucker was just having a ball, having so much fun, saying Anna sucks, Anna's stupid, Anna's ugly, Anna's this, Anna's that, she sucks, get her out of here. And then I'm just like, fuck you, asshole. And then he apologizes and and says he won't do it anymore. And now I and I see him just, you know, with his tail between his legs, and then I feel bad because I feel like I ruined his good time. He just that being mean to me just brought him so much joy. And I just ripped that out of him. And I, I'm I'm sorry now. This is fucking weird. Okay, let's get to some calls. Hello, who is this? First of all, I'd like to apologize for not being a millionaire uh, hot guy. I'm more of a dad bod, hundred narrow. But my dog's cute as fuck. Your dog is cute. I did go back on your Instagram. <laughs> uh, thank you for calling in, Gary. I appreciate it. Yeah. Look, I know you're I, what I think it equates to is I've had a lot of time off because I got hurt, and I start seeing, like, I, when I was at work, I was just like, oh, God. I'm like, okay. But now that I start, like, seeing shit, and I start seeing things and piling on and being a dick. And yesterday when you talked about how you went on a deep dive and went looking through my shit and all that, and I'm like, you know what, dude? You made her feel some type of way to do that, and I don't ever want to make somebody feel some type of way. I mean, you've got you know? to have known, Gare Bear, that when you just oh. write horrific things about people... <laughs> Day in and day out that it, you know, of course, listen, I mean, it wasn't ruining my day, but it certainly wasn't making it any better or easier. And like, what was your intention? I suppose was it just, I don't even know. I, I, boredom, I mean, you did it boredom. for like a, a, a six months, a year. You, you had no, no, like, it has not been six months a year. Was it just if making you, you feel better? What was the, what was no. the point? No, no, it definitely wasn't making me feel better. Well, like I said, I would see people start picking things, and I'm like, no, she's not. And then I'd start watching. I'm like, holy fuck, you know what? They're right. And this is, like, one of my biggest problems with Bubba going visually and to chat. Chat has, in a lot of ways, ruined the Bubba army because... Like most you of times, are the problem. I don't understand. <laughs> You're blaming chat. You are chat. Well, I'm not all a chat. I'm not the other people that sit there and don't say things. Don't pass the buck, motherfucker. This is I'm this. Not, you were one of the worst not, ones. You were one of the no, meanest I am, no, no, no. I am the worst ones. I am the worst one. Okay. And I can and I can promise you that that will never happen again because, like I said, I sat there. Yes, I got a little angry watching on locals. I'm actually a little oh, more. Oh well, welcome mad to my so- world, motherfucker. But go on, <laughs> go on. But now I'm a little bit more angry at somebody that had to like throw me under the bus and make, I don't Longwood, because I don't I don't want to be a dick, but it's a good thing that that guy has erased 90% of the conversations we've had on Instagram, because I was going to be like, all right, motherfucker, you want to start throwing people under the bus? So I'm over all that. There's no reason why grown-ass men like myself, you know what I think maybe changed my mind? The fact that I like women's basketball now, and we shouldn't be ganging up on a woman on the show. Oh, maybe so it had nothing it to do with me and everything to do with Caitlin Clark. Is that what you're saying? We, we We used to be cool as fuck, Anna. Like, we used to tweet back and forth. When you were in the back studio when you first started, I would call in that show, and and Mommy's like, oh, that's Longwood. He's up in Jersey. He's a single guy. I'm good. Thank God you didn't fucking look then. I was just, um, I was just confused, but uh, listen, and never, I and never apologize and feel bad for it. You're not a weak bitch. You have toughened up, like it's crazy. I mean, are you taking credit for this? I just, I'm, I'm no, just very confused no. that you, you've come to this very insightful epiphany all of a sudden where you're like, there's no reason why a grown man should be tormenting a woman in, <laughs> every day, day in and day out, just nonstop. And I make, you know, maybe I have a, you know, seven minute rant and all of a sudden you've just had this complete change of heart. And I'm just, I'm kind of shocked because usually I don't have that effect on people, number one. And number two, like, <laughs> how did you not come to that on your own you know that, that conclusion on your own this whole time i don't know you know sometimes men are half our tards we need to be uh checked every now and then and then i was thinking about it i'm like i'm like man when you're doing your job in a customer's house and they're standing over you you don't like that shit i said you're pretty much doing the same thing to her when she's just trying to do her job brian from philly and 20 dollars Sorry, go on. Yes, I'm listening. And like I said, I don't like the fact that I made you feel a certain way. Like, I thought, like, you were just like, oh, fuck this dude. 
and brush it off and have me block. The fact that I made you feel some type of way made me feel shitty about doing that. And, you know, like I said, I don't ever want to make anybody, especially on the show, feel like shit. I mean, you would say things like, I'm useless, I suck, why is she there, what's the point? I mean... Yeah, I I can let most of that roll off my back, and I certainly, you know, I don't even think I ever addressed maybe once on the air and told you to fuck off. But for the most part, I just kind of let it roll off my back. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't affect you, because my brain, my eyes are taking that in that in that information. It's getting processed in my brain, and when it gets processed in your brain, when you read something shitty, especially shitty about yourself, let's just use that as an example. It goes into the part of your brain where you go, does this person, is this person making a good point? Is this possibly true? And then you start weighing out the different pros and cons. Am I useless? Am I worthless? So now I'm considering, and then I get mad at myself for even letting it get to that department of my brain where I'm considering that this person may have a point. And maybe you do. You know, if someone hates me or they think I'm not talented or whatever the case may be, useless, worthless, ugly, stupid, flat chested, dumb, bitch, whatever the case may be, in my- what I would always say is like, they're they're not wrong. Like you're entitled to feel whatever way that you feel. It seems bizarre, like you said, that a grown man would take so much time I'm out of his day to write horrible things but again I just I just go you know Ana, you got to just keep scrolling and be more resilient now again I do I do appreciate the apology I, I never expect anyone to give me one because I feel like I'm owed nothing from anyone ever but it is, no, it right, is nice not. I'm not right and, and no one is I don't I don't need apologies I maybe need things to be corrected when people some people call me racist on the air or something to that effect But as far as, you know, my talent, my value, what I bring to the show, what I look like, I understand that I'm, I don't want to say like a public persona, but I'm on a show that it is streaming live. People are tuning in, listening in, watching, whatever, what have you. And when you put yourself on display like that, you have to be understanding to the fact that not everyone's going to like you and you may see some things you don't like and you have to just be okay with that. And I am usually fine. It's annoying. It's not great to hear, but I accept it. And that's why I didn't block you or I didn't delete your comments or anything like that because I go, listen, the man wants to talk. I feel like this is an open forum. It's not like completely the equivalent to the First Amendment free speech as it is our platform. But nevertheless, I don't like silencing people. And then, like I mentioned before, if this sort of hate talking and spewing and trolling gives you a lot of joy and fulfillment in your life, I don't want to take that away from you because that's how much I fucking care. Okay? (laughs) I got it. Yeah, but I can promise you there will never be any more bullshit. I even I even gave you a good morning honor with the Caitlin Cart little hearts in the hands oh, when they were talking one. about it. I, I this morning. Oh, okay. Well, listen. I appreciate that. Now, now that you've moved on from hating on me, do you think that you will take on another co-host of the Bubba Army and start hating on mm, them a little bit, or, you, no, or did I just clean no, you up? I mean. I mean, I'm a little aggravated with my probably my favorite person on the show, but no. Who's your, fa- no. Who's your favorite no, person on the show? stupid. The, Seth. Oh. Oh, oh well, hold, you, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 that's, that's 1A. That's 1A. I'm sorry, because Bubba's the favorite. Sure, sure. But uh, I said co-host, so that's fair. Now, what's yeah. what's the deal with Seth? Why why are you upset with Seth? Because, Maybe I can mediate. Because yesterday he had a, he, he had a name... Me, when he could have said, oh, the people in chat, he goes, oh, who, Longwood? And that just, like, set you right off and running. But look where we are now. If he didn't didn't throw off your name, if he didn't rattle off your name, I would not have even gone down that path. And look where we are now. You're calling into my show saying that you're sorry and that you're not going to write anything mean about me ever again. I mean, don't you think that... Is he, so how can you hate Seth or be a little upset with Seth when he led us to this path, which it seems like you're on some level grateful for? <laughs> right? Oh, like man, you you really those two Jew. things can't. <laughs> Did you say you really are a Jew? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there oh, we shit. have it, folks. That's cool. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, I didn't know there's a such thing as Jewish guilt until I started hearing you oh, talk about it. Yes. 
Well, I I don't really know how that correlates. Maybe because you think I'm smart or something like that. But I feel like you can't oh, you be mad at I, Seth. One thing I've never called you is stupid. That's for sure. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you. Perhaps someone else was calling me a moron, but I definitely got a lot of on it as dumb as hell, on a stupid as fuck about things. But all right, well, Longwood, I I appreciate it. I I'm. I'm willing to, you know, extend an olive branch. I accept the apology, and I'm glad that we can go back to being civil, amicable uh, friends in the virtual world. So thank you. No problem. And I mean, I got something coming in for being sent in for you in a week or so once it's finished. Okay. Well, when the bomb is complete, um, I'll no, accept it with open it's arms. It's not a bomb. It goes along with something you said at the end of the show yesterday. It's not a bomb. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think about what I talked about. I think it was you, but... Yes. Okay. Hmm. Well, right, I look Anna, forward you to receiving a, your gift. You have a great weekend. See you at 199. Your weekend. Yes. Uh, all right. Have a great weekend. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Is he sincere? I don't know. I feel like he might be. How do you not come to that conclusion on your own as a grown ass person? But um, I'm glad that we were able to kind of uh, parse out our differences and come to the table uh, cool headed. And uh, Gary, I accept your apology. I'm glad we can be friends. Um, I I wish that someone else would have gotten a chance to go on the, the merry-go-round of hate from you. That would have been cool. That would have made me feel a little better if you're like, okay, now I'm going to target, you know. Uh, set of uh, Dan, whatever, whoever person you chose, it would have been nice to just kind of for them to get a turn. But that's okay. I'm glad that we're just we're just cleaning you up, John Costiga, with a forty nine ninety nine. Thank you, sir. And again, I am very sorry. Let me let me check Rumbles. Let me check Rumbles. All right, I think we're good. I think I got most people. I think maybe. Oh no, we got like we got two hundred on fucking on the Rumbles. Okay, my bad. Yeah, 112 on YouTube. Okay, we got we got uh, quite a a crowd here. I like it. Uh, hello, who's this? Hi, Anna. Hey, who's this? Uh, this is David. What's up, uh, Dave? Plumber in Tampa. Dave the plumber. What's going on? Hey, you you started talking about the fitness thing, and I I haven't called in and talked to you in a long, long time. It's been a couple of years. A lot of things have changed with y'all since then. But yeah. Um, yeah, you were talking about working out, and it was so funny because as soon as you put me on hold, you started talking about Orange Theory, and I was just going to share my experience. I uh, I used to go to like U Fit and a couple other places. Yeah, and um, like you said, everybody's different. I, I would go to those places, and I wouldn't really push myself, and I I'd end up when I did push myself, I would you know lift too much weight on the bench press or whatever, and mm-hmm. hurt my shoulder or whatever. It seemed like I was always hurting. Yeah, so. I, I tried Orange Theory yeah. and um, started doing the cardio and everything there. And um, my knee is better and my shoulder's better. Fucking I've been awesome. doing it for three years. Really? How, how frequently do you do it? I feel like it's a pretty intense workout. I do it twice a week. That's great. Now, I do a little bit of extra stuff on the side, but I have never experienced what you talk about anybody ever yelling at me. I mean, to motivate you, not. I, oh, I meant yelling I, yeah. in a good way, sort of thing. I guess it was just annoying because yeah, I was just I, like, "Shut I, up!" I, but yeah, it's it's like you know when you're. I, I know what you're saying a, a little bit. I mean, I just don't get. I don't get that vibe. But um, what I do get is when they do. I like it if I'm messing up on an exercise, which I do quite fre- frequently. When mm-hmm. I'm doing something wrong, they come up and say, "Oh, you know, do this or do that." But it's all very measured and you know and it's and everybody's cool there so i i love it that's great and again you have to understand my experience is based on one class with one instructor at one studio so and again i, I think that. you know it was just a one time thing and i was like okay if this yeah. is the vibe i just i don't like it because for me like i said i am just i like headphones on I'm just tuned in to whatever problem i'm trying to solve in my life and i just also happen to be moving my body so that's kind of yeah, how it is my, for me. But if that works for you, fucking more power to you. Yeah, my daughter's like that. She she's like kind of like you about your age, and she's she's like, oh no, I don't like anybody telling me what to do. Right. <laughs> yeah. Especially when they're yeah. not as fit as you too. So I'm like, what the fuck? Like in my head, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, why are you telling yeah, I, me what to, I should be telling I look, you what to do? 
Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's, that's I I understand how you ladies are. But, yeah. Yeah, like in um, at this particular one, every once in a while they bring in somebody new, and I've only had one bad experience. But like at the Carrollwood one, every all the trainers there, all the coaches they call them coaches. Yeah. Are all you know, I get they're super cool. But I have only been like to two other places, and it's all been pretty good. But um, oh, I was going to ask yeah. you what happened yesterday with Bubba. When Bubba was supposed to apologize to you, what what, what happened? Because I heard he said, you know, he won't say I, I'm going to apologize, but he was doing saying something, I, I, and I never heard that, that part of the That show. may have resembled an apology, but maybe didn't technically qualify as one. Oh, I know he's <laughs> apologized. Yeah, no, he apologized. He apologized. Um, you're asking what happened? Yeah, what ha- what was that about? Sure, I'd be happy to explain. So, uh, Operation Pigmentation, you're familiar with that franchise? Yeah, question, I haven't seen mark? it yet. I, I, <clears throat> okay. It's one of those things I don't really pay much attention to. Okay. Um, well, Seth does a podcast with some of his bartender, uh, bartenders, sorry, barbers, oh, okay, okay. barbers, sorry, yeah. barbers, uh, from South St. Pete yeah. that come in, and they I'll happen to that. be black yeah. guys, which is cool. You know, we could get some flavor in here. That's great. And on the last episode of Operation Pigmentation, which was recorded, I believe, on Tuesday afternoon, um, Bubba took his TT night night and I guess was still around the studios for some reason and comes on in and gets on the mic. And people know around here, and if you've been listening to the show for you know any period of time, you're probably aware that I'm a little quirky when it comes to... Uh, My OCD stuff. I'm a bit of a germaphobe. I like to wipe things down. I'm a vegetarian, and if meat touches anything that I was going to eat, I won't eat it anymore. Like, I'm just, I got a lot of quirks about myself. So I like to make sure, and for those watching the show on YouTube or Rumble, I'm using my own microphone. So when I sit in anybody's seat, I use my own microphone. Dan uses his own microphone. Lummy does, Seth does, and Bubba does. So I switch it out. So when I learned that the Operation Pigmentation guys were coming, I would switch out their mic. Well, on Tuesday, I was not, I didn't know that it was an every Tuesday thing. So I didn't switch out my mic. I just left it there. And I Uh was hoping that, you know, if if anybody comes in, that it would just get switched out because people, you know, they know my quirks. Well, what actually, this must have been last week when they recorded. So last week, the, 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 the mic doesn't get switched out and I get kind of annoyed. And when I was informed of what happened, I knew someone was in my seat because I keep my space in a very particular way. And if anything is yeah. moved or the dial is turned, I know someone has been sitting here. So my the the dial was turned up, meaning that I could hear stuff coming out of the headphones. The headphones weren't where I left them. So it was just very obvious that someone had been sitting in my seat. So I made a comment about it and Seth said that, you know, no, he didn't switch out the mics. And Bubba basically said, like, deal with it. And I didn't say anything. I was definitely flashing some very dirty looks to people in the studio. I will admit to that. But I didn't say anything. I was fucking pissed. Yeah, I was mad. And then I wasn't just mad that it happened. I was mad that people were just like, get over it. So I was just like, fuck you. Like, I was like, I was like really mad because it's like you, I don't ask for much around here. I really don't. I'm not a princess about stuff. Maybe just, you know, just switch out the mic. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not asking to park in a special spot or have snacks for me on hand. I bring my own coffee. Like, I'm just not asking for much. So that pissed me. Thank you. I think you said you 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 deserve it. Yes, yeah, just, you know, maybe just a little, a little respect and decency. I, I don't think that's too much to ask. So yeah. I I kind of threw what Bubba said was a fit, which was basically I said nothing and I just flashed some very, very dirty looks, which is the, is the only way for me to express myself sometimes. So that happened, and then when the Operation Pigmentation guys came on, uh, I believe it was on Tuesday, they talked about how I was upset about that. And then the one of the black guys, I believe it was Craig, said, oh, Anna's a germaphobe. And then Bubba said, no, she's racist. And then he insisted that I was racist. And then I think he said, you got to call, quote, a spade a spade. And when I heard what? that <laughs> at my house, right before I was about to go kayaking, um, I was... I don't want to say enraged, but I was shocked. I was shooketh. 
because, listen, I get called a lot of nasty things around here from t- people or chat or whatever the case may be. But and, and I can stomach all of those things. But when you start throwing accusations like kid toucher, racist, sexist, whatever the case, those sorts of things, I could actually probably get away with sexist. But I could be a man hater and probably get away with it. I am not. But anyways. Um, you cannot throw racist on my plate. That is not a good tag to have. So I called Bubba, which was certainly the move. Because when you start texting things, oftentimes they can get turned around. The person has time to respond. You got to ambush. You got to ambush. Yeah. So I called Bubba, which I never fucking do. Because he says, don't call me, text me, or talk right, to right. me in person. So I called him. And I knew he was going to be so shocked that I was calling that he would answer. So he was like, hey, what's going on? Thinking like maybe I got into a really bad car accident. You know, he's thinking it's something crazy happened. So I was just like, hey, sorry to bother you. But is there a reason why you were accusing me of being a racist on Operation Pigmentation? And immediately he denied it. And then I knew that was going to happen. So I just said, would you like me to play it for you right now? Because it's potted right. up, ready to go. And he was like, no, 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 no. Uh, sorry, I don't know. I don't remember what I said. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Bye. I said, okay. So um, are you underwater now? Oh, buddy, I got to turn. Okay, that's better. Um, so that's. Okay. Well, thanks for filling me in on that. that. Yeah, I don't think he, that was, he must have been, yeah, that, 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 I don't understand why Bubba would have said that. Uh, uh, listen, we, we, we determined that it was an ambient-induced uh, oh, exactly. rant. That's- yeah, so yeah, yeah. he wasn't fully aware. He had a bit of a Roseanne moment. And listen, he apologized. Right, right. He corrected uh, his former statement. So I can't I can't be mad at the guy, you know. If you, it, like with Longwood, if you do something bad, if you do me dirty, but you go, hey, I'm sorry. Like when Seth kind of like snapped at me with the mic thing, the next day he goes, I'm sorry. Like all of my anger or, or whatever is completely diffused. Like I'm just like, you said sorry. Like you you admitted fault. We're fucking good, man. Like slap hands, A OK. So Bubba, he apologized. He didn't call me a bitch on the road to the apology, but whatever. I'll still take it. It was an apology nonetheless. So we're good. It's squashed. Um, I know every Tuesday to switch out the mic, and if not, it's whatever. I'll just I'll make sure that it happens the, the next time, you know, whatever the case may be. So, does that that answer your question? That answers my question. Oh, you were asking me about Orange Theory Fitness being intense. That's the other thing I like about that. Yeah, is that I, they push you further than what you would push yourself. Cause yes, I'll be up at times like on the treads. Like recently, I started. I used to always go on treads first, and yeah. then uh, you can either go weight floor or, or you can go on the rower first. You know, then you end up doing. If you go on the uh, rowers first, you end up going to treadmill last. Yeah. And so, but done everything, and you're at the end, and you're like, you start to learn that you can push yourself harder and harder, just because everybody else is doing it. Like you were saying, being around other people. And so it, it helps you. If I was by myself, like when I was going to UFIT, I would never push myself. Like sure, that. sure. I, I, I totally get that. I, I totally get that. So, sometimes it's it's nice to have someone yelling old. at you a little bit. Yeah, I'm 59 years old now, and I never ran before. I never could run because my knee always started hurting. I always had a bad knee. Okay. And now I, I can run four miles. So how did how did, you just needed someone to yell at you to run, and it, it healed the pain in your no. knee? <laughs> no, no. They don't oh. yell. I mean— I, just, just the physical act of just working through it, starting out on an incline, and then for you know a couple of months. Also, I mean, you probably lost some years. weight along the way, right? Well, the funny thing is, I'm not a heavy guy. Oh, okay. I was like, I was like 195 when I started. I'm six foot tall. Oh, okay, and, yeah. Um, I'm down to like 175. At my heaviest ever in my whole entire life, I was at 205. All right. But, I was thinking maybe you lost a lot of weight, and then obviously there was less pressure on the knee joint, and then you were able to run pain free. It's weird because um, you know I started out on the incline, and just within a matter of a few months, my my knee pain went away. Oh, great! And then I could start. I could start running, and the same that you know when I hear Lummy talking about he never does anything because of his bad knee or his bad shoulder or whatever it is. 
I don't understand that. You you can you can physically you can fix yourself just by doing exercise. Uh, yes, I'm, yes, you can. I'm, by the way, yeah. even though Lummy doesn't do any, let's say, formal exercise, that motherfucker is constantly hauling shit to and from, and cutting grass. And I know that's not what we classically think of as exercise, but he's definitely not a sluggish, sloth-like pl- person. I just want to. Yeah. Clear the record that Lummy's very active. Yeah, but I, I, I don't understand how how he. I don't know. Yeah, he's just a different kind of person. That, I just physically for me, I just can't. I have to. You know, I'm I'm a plumber, so I work. You know, I'm physically working all the time, but I have to do additional things. You know what I mean? I yeah. Have to, no, I, I get you. I get you. I mean, more is most people need to do more. You know, most people need to do more. There's very few people where I'm like, you should probably back off because a lot of people are worried about overexerting themselves. And I'm like, that's probably not your problem. You know, you don't want to do too much too quickly, of course. But for most people, you don't need to back it off. You need to you need to ramp it up a bit. So I get that as well. Yeah, that's that's what Orange Theory does. Is they they can. Oh, I'm aware. I mean, I did it. I just I just fucking hated it. That was it. Yeah, I understand. Cool. But yeah, it's for cool. All right, okay. man. Well, thank you for uh, thank you for calling in. I really appreciate your support and and listening to the show and taking time out of your day to talk to me. So thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Hello. Who's this? I'm a homo. Joe the supermarket. Oh, Joe. Joe, 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 what's going on, man? Thank you for sending me all wanna... those delicious-looking donut videos. I've watched oh, yeah. them more yep. than once. Is that weird? I don't blame you. Yeah, that's yeah, good stuff. It's not. I, I don't. I mean, I find it weird uh, sending it to you, but I know you enjoy it, so I mm-hmm. know it's okay at the end. Now, first off, I need to tell you that Maria Guatemala wants her minute and a half that she's owed from last week. Okay, it was a five minute that she spent, and but I only got three and a half. You only got three so and, a half? A okay. and a half. Okay, you got clear. a minute and a half snipe free. Got it. Go ahead, right. Joe. So I'll, you know what? I'm feeling topic. good today. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a, f- a solid five. An unsnipable five. And then after that, if someone snipes you, then you got to go. So let me just tell that to the people listening now in case they try to snipe you that you're locked in for a solid five minutes. OK, and we've we've spent one talking about it. So you got four left. Go ahead. Super duper. So you started off the show talking about would I rather work out at home or would I rather work out in a gym? To me, I would rather work out in a gym, but alone. I want nobody in the gym. I want the good quality gym equipment. But and just the alone TVs and the music. Yeah, the employees could be there too, but I'd rather just be in there in an hour where like five o'clock sucks, right? Yes, you, you don't go, go during rush morning, hour. Sorry, I love going in the morning. I used to love going to the gym, so that was my thing there. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as this whole Longwood thing goes, that's a whole other area because not only was he rude to you all the time, he's also been rude to me, and I kind of got to the crux of the situation as I was thinking about it yesterday. Yeah. When he was going to get the, the chat ring with the, the name Gary on it. Right. And, and, and he was all positive and everything was positive and he befriended me and he was not so smart Gary. And he took that name and he changed his name on the internet to not so smart Gary. And he was so ready to receive that ring at nine thirty in the morning on that day. And when he did it, and when Gary Breezewine got the ring, yeah. that's when, Something flipped in this guy's head. Now, you mention, think that's why he went oh, after me? Because he was, for, he was bitter about the ring? For, I've been in my house for six months, so that's an excuse to be mean to people. I've been in bed for four years, motherfucker. Oh, and wow. And I'm nice to every single person that I come in contact with. What would Jesus nice say about that language you just used? I was even nice. Jesus loves it because Jesus uh, oh. created it. Oh, sorry. You're as right. long as I don't take the Lord's name in vain, that's the biggest sin oh. I could ever do. So you could say, but, okay, you could call him a motherfucker, but you can't call, like, God a motherfucker. Yeah, I could okay. call him a motherfucking worthless piece of shit, oh. fucking asshole. Oh, my word. Because okay. that's exactly, that's that's a fraction of what he said about me. The mm. same time he's bashing and ridiculing you in chat, he's doing the same thing about me, spreading lies. For no absolute reason. Do you and think that that's part of the, the reason bas- why you've been banned from every single platform that we stream on? That's, yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad I brought that, that he, up, too. The fact that he can get away with murder, calling <gasps> somebody a word today just because, and then attacking. What kind of word? What kind of word? The fizzag. He called him a fizzag. Oh, because, you can't use that word. We were tired right, of that word back in seventh grade. In the Rumble chat. In so the he, Rumble he, chat. I know you, 
I know you said you didn't see him in the Rumble chat. No. But he was in the Rumble chat going hard again. Who, who was he calling the F word? You? Set. Was he calling you the F word? No, just another. He basically, he attacks any any listener that's in there. That's why he calls oh. you a 15-year-old boy. And anybody that thinks yeah. you're pretty or says that you're cute is is, is weird, a bunch of weirdos. Yes, he yes. just goes into the chat and tries to pick a fight with everybody. Yeah, now, again, you're making me mad all could, over again, Joe. I, was, I felt this, like I was diffused, but... This no, this isn't meant to infuriate you. This is meant to update you on the one that you're not the only one. Okay, and I appreciate just like that. You're willing to forgive. I'm willing to forgive too. I don't even need an apology. He's already forgiven before the apologies even need to come out. Mm. I just don't understand why somebody could be on one side of the fence and be nice one minute, and then in a flip, though his last message to me before he blocked me on Messenger was positive and nice. Mm. He said, "I heard your call on Bubba today. It was good to hear your voice." And all this positive stuff, and then blocked me, and then mm. went to the internet and just started bashing me and bashing me and bashing me. Uh, all right, Everywhere I got, I could. gotta let you go, Joe. Your your four minutes is up. You've been sniped once by uh, Ned's Hisserps, twenty dollars. Thank you very much. And then what is this this new one? Because we're, we're making money today, folks. We're making money. We're making April great again. Once Joe is sniped, this is if he calls back, snipe. Oh shit, John Costica, nineteen ninety nine. I'm sorry. And John Costica was the one that wanted to save you, that you could actually get locked in for time with a with a donation. Uh, hello, who's this? He called back. Oh, shit. John Costica. Hello? Nope. Goodbye. Uh, hello, who's this? Hey, Anna, this is Wes. How you doing? It's Wes? Yeah. What's up, Wes? <laughs> What's up, man? No, I just wanted to call in. I've been listening for probably, I'd say, three years now. Um, just wanted to call in and say, you know, love you, uh, what you do for the show. Thank and you. Appreciate everything you do and love listening to you. Thank you. Is that is that it? There's no like, fuck you, <laughs> dumb bitch, or no. I, I think everything is a trap these days. I, I have a lot of paranoia. Whenever someone is nice to me, yeah. I'm like, "What? What's coming around the corner?" But uh, Wes, thank yeah. you. I I appreciate that. I'll take that. Yeah, no, I don't do. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I don't do the chat. You're not a total piece of the, shit. Uh, yeah, thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a keyboard warrior. I just listen on the app and uh, while I'm at work, and um, just always like the content you bring to the show. Figured I'd call and let you Dude, know. Dude, thank you. Are, thank sound you. like complete assholes. Thank you. It's nice to kind of like balance this out with people who are, you know, uh, appreciative and nice and live lives where they're fulfilled, where they don't feel like you said they need to go to the keyboard and just try to ruin people's days, <laughs> lives. Um, yeah, that, that, that's the one aspect of, uh, of y'all show that I just don't I just don't understand why why people do that. It's one of the things where if you don't if you don't like someone, then don't listen to it. You right. Know what I mean? It's weird. Like, I feel like I've never really, well, I guess outside of Longwood, you, you rarely, like, meet these people in public. Like, everybody, it, the trolls are everybody else. It's never you, right? It's like, where are these oh, people? Yeah. Like, the thousands upon thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people, you know, in the States or worldwide that just take it to the interwebs and just let loose trying to hurt people's feelings. Now, to be fair, well, sometimes when I see comments about let's say maybe a larger woman or something like something like that they, they, they are pretty funny but it, it it's not nice it's not nice yeah i don't i don't yeah i don't know i've, I've never understood why people are so damn mean to you sometimes. i know i, mean, I know like I said, i'm not i'm not part of the chat stuff so i don't see it i just hear hear y'all talk about it but yeah those are the same people that would never say it to your face that's why they always go to the internet with that bullshit yeah it's it's and listen if you come up with something good like i have to i have to say this so there was there was something that i'm kind of ashamed that i laughed at but there was this <laughs> there was this person this this girl maybe she was around 20 maybe she was a woman even we can even call her a woman and maybe she like you know, maybe she had an extra, like, chromosome, maybe, like, something, situation like that. And, like, mm -hmm. great, like, awesome. She's online. She was doing, like, fitness stuff. Like, God bless her. And someone, some fucking piece of shit wrote, like, 
what did he say? He said something to the effect of like, oh, this is uh, Selena Chromez or something like that. Like okay, worked yeah. in a, cro- and boy, did I pop on that. And I was like, fuck you for making me laugh at this horrific joke, bitch. Um, uh, well, yeah, well, I mean, what, yeah. what's funny is funny, but you weren't the one that said it. No, so. and that's the thing is like, if <laughs> I am all about, and let this be known, Wes, and to the rest of the people listening, that... When I talk shit just as much as you, but I hide it from you, I don't say it to your face. I don't text it to you. I don't say things about you online unless you started it. If you started it, then all bets are off. But I never go out of my way. I've never written a mean comment about someone's body online. Do I talk shit? Absolutely. We all do. It's just part of the nature of being a human being. Laugh at shit. Oh, my God. What a dumb bitch. Fat bitch. This whole thing. But when it comes to going online, especially like on on a place like Instagram, where these I, I follow a lot of fat bitches. I find them fascinating. I, I love their outlook on life. I wish I lived in their world where everyone is beautiful, even though you and I both know that's not the case. But I see these horrific things people write, and they're not even trying to like make jokes. They're just telling them to die, and they're fat, they're gross, and they'll never find love, and just horrible things. And I just go like, what? Like, say that to your spouse or, like, make a joke about them, but yeah. don't write it to them. Like, why would you want them to see that? That's that's the difference between you and I and everybody else who's a piece of shit is that we talk shit, but we just we're, we hide it from you because we care about you. Yeah, or you know? I mean, if I want you, to, if I wanted you to know, I definitely say it to your face. Exactly, because uh, you're a real that, man. If it calls for it. Yes, <laughs> Wes, you're the best man. I really appreciate you calling in. You made my day. Yeah, no problem. I, uh, I've, I've tried to. I mean, you know, obviously I said I listen while I work. I've tried to call in a couple times while uh, while you're getting some heat from Bubba and them, you know, during his show. But yeah. it's hard to get through sometimes. So. Yeah, sometimes it's the best just to leave it alone. I know a lot of people think, like, if they call in and defend me when Bubba's mad, they think that it will help. But it actually, and it's not your fault, but it actually makes the situation worse because then it seems like – you know, Bubba doesn't like it when chat turns against him, number one. And then he may think that it's a conspiracy where I'm encouraging people and asking people to call in on my behalf to leave a character review. And that is certainly not what I'm doing. So oddly enough, if you call in and defend me, he will get more mad at me. That's kind of how that works. So just letting you know. Yeah, I'm, I, 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 I would more or less do it just to kind of let him know, hey, um, you know, I, I kind of started listening to the show right around the time that she came on and she's a... Uh, you know, she's my favorite on the show, so that's, you know, one of the main reasons wow. why I listen. Thank you. Um, you know, that, you know, kind of make him, you know, acknowledge that, and maybe he'll think twice kind of thing. Probably not, but that they, I appreciate it. I appreciate the sentiment <laughs> and the, the gesture. Even if you don't do it, just the thought alone, know that I am appreciative of that, so... God bless you, Wes. Thank you. Uh, Please watch tonight. Have a good weekend. Yes, Bubble 199, 8 to 10. So please listen in. All right. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Caller. Hello. Hey, it's Tampa Terry. Can you hear me? Oh, fuck yeah. Loud and clear, buddy. How is, uh, where are you? Uh, Fanon, uh, Saginaw. Where, where are you? Hey, calling in from Canada here, Muscle Beach. Uh, Muscle just wanted Beach. to say, first okay. of all, great shows this week. Thank you. Uh, on your topic of uh, the gyms, the home gyms versus the commercial gyms, for anyone who does want to get into the home gyms, but you can't get started with a big baller setup like Bubba has in the Clem Gym right away, the way that I did it is resistance bands. The most, yes. Uh, well, oh. the way I started was go on Facebook Marketplace or whatever and get a a bench press, an Olympic bar, and a weight tree. That's the most important thing because okay. that alone covers your compound movements, bench press, overhead press, squats, deadlifts, and more. Then the second piece I would start with is a separate bench that you can do dumbbell stuff on. And uh, th- then some dumbbells, maybe an easy curl bar. And that right there has you covered for a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. So anyone who does want to do that, that's probably the way to start and get it pre-owned. Because all these assholes buy this gym stuff and then they never use it. So right, they're that's barely where you used. Can really gently clean used. Up brothers on the Facebook marketplace. Nice. Be a baller on a budget. I like that. Do you have a home gym? I'm assuming Tampa Terry. I feel like you don't leave your house. Is that the correct assumption? Yes, that is right and right. And, okay. Uh, nice. 
So like I, COVID was no no big deal for you because you were you were always doing that shit. Is that right? Yeah, I, I was already not leaving the house. Nice. So. Okay. Yeah, nice. and I did the home gym piece by piece. I started, like I said, with the benches, and then I got a heavy bag and the Bob punching dummy, and then a bike, and then some more weights. Oh, a peloton? A piece, piece, brother. A peloton? I'm sorry, what was that? Is that a peloton? Is that what you're referring to? I got, I got a Nordic track, bro. Okay, but it's like the track, same bro, concept, bro. right? Yeah, kind of like that. Kind of like that, brother. Okay. Can and, I tell you, know, you about... Uh, I want to say... Yeah, go ahead. I, I also just want to say before I go, brother, great shows this week. I love the uh, the Tiger King deal too, bro. Yeah, and uh, you know, great call by Longwood earlier. You know, that was a real class act for him to, uh, you know, call in and make things right like that, bro. You know, uh, it's too bad, you know, that, that that other guy called in with all that negativity, bro. But I take my hat off to Longwood for taking the high road, brother. That really almost brought a tear to my eye. Really. That was a truly beautiful moment oh, yes. in Bub Army history, I think, brother. And, you yeah, know, I think what, we, what a great... we had a breakthrough there, which is nice. That, now that I have two fans. So I'll take all I can get. Yeah, you're absolutely right, brother. And <laughs> hey, I, hey, you know what? You got a lot more than two fans, though. But, oh, hey, thanks. Have a great day. I'm out of here. God bless everyone. All right. God bless. Um, I do have a new girl crush, which is weird because he brought up Peloton. And I don't have a Peloton. I never got on the Peloton train. I know, I think their business is doing very poorly. I think the best thing that happened to Peloton was COVID-19, um, which is kind of fucked up to say, but there are a few industries, businesses, what have you, where they were just really, really thriving under covid when COVID happened. And one of those businesses, of course, it's like masks, hand sanitizer, uh, all that sort of shit. They were doing really well during the times of COVID. But another business that did exceptionally well was Peloton. Peloton did very well. All of a sudden, all my friends had them. I didn't know that. Uh, they were They are not cheap. I think they're a bit cheaper now because everyone is selling the ones that they bought for two grand and they're selling them on Facebook Marketplace for, you know, a cool 600. But I have recently become aware through social media and I'm so grateful um, that I found one of the Peloton instructors and it's rare when you meet someone in life, not that I know her personally, but she is so perfectly fit to be a Peloton instructor. Her name is Kendall Tool. She's beautiful. She's kind of built like me. So I kind of, you know, maybe that's what it is where I'm like, oh, she doesn't look like me or anything, but same body type, kind of like built on top, not, not a big chest area, small titties, thicker legs, nice butt. And I'm just like, oh my God, okay, I like her look, number one. And then when she gets on the bike and she's like encouraging the women and the men, mostly the women, and just has her quick little, like I could never get away with saying some of the shit that she does. She's like, come on, girl. Like, I don't know what it is. She's just got a certain flair about herself. And it's rare when I see someone and I'm like, you are so perfectly fit for the job that you have. Because it's rarely like that where, you know, especially how you meet people. I mean, not to say like, oh, you're perfectly fit to be a, a CPA or something like that that's a bit more bland. But she is just everything about her is she is PG maybe PG-13, like just the right amount of spicy. She is like, like go girl, you know, women power sort of a thing, but also like gives props to the guys. She was giving props to Beyonce for being, you know, the first black artist to top the country charts. But I don't know. I just, there's just something about her where I'm like, I really fucking like this chick. Uh, and she hypes people up. Check her out, Kendall Tool. I don't know why you would if you're you should just watch her Peloton videos as you don't have a Peloton and maybe I don't know jerk off. She's a very pretty lady, um, but I'm I'm a big fan of hers. So, anyways, Kendall, I know you're not listening, but I I don't even Peloton, but I'm a big fan, and you're perfect at what you do. God bless you. Uh, hello, who's this? Anna, hi, this is Jason. Um, I wanted to call and let you know a couple things. Uh, real quick, I love your show. Thank you. Is, um, is this Fish on Jay or is, no? No, oh, my okay, name's sorry. Jason. Um, I'm not okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Since the 98 Rock. Gotcha, days, gotcha. But, um, go ahead, sir. Jason, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was, 
I was calling you to let you know um, that I, uh, one, um, I used to be a fat bitch and I love fat bitches. Okay. And, uh, and I've been inside of a, of a couple of fat bitches and they, they do give the best head, but uh, that's not the reason I'm calling. Cause you were asking about, uh, <laughs> uh, about working out and stuff. And yeah. um, I have to give you some kudos. I've lost uh, 35 pounds due to your fasting. Oh, fuck. Yeah, man. That's awesome. That I love <laughs> hearing that. Those are the best compliments. Cause I didn't make it up, but if you, you know, decided to explore it because I said something on the air, then that's really awesome. Thank you. I heard it first through you, so I give you the kudos. Yes, I'll take um, that. And, uh, and also, I did, um, I did uh, get a rubber band gym and some dumbbells and stuff at home. So I, I, I am a home workouter, and I still am a home workouter Good. until I drop uh, a few more pounds. And then I think I'll get back in the gym once I can lose the fat bitches and start getting some thin ones. <laughs> or just and some, some mid sized <laughs> ones. They don't have to be thin or skinny, but, you know, just do hey, some. I'll take a soccer chick, man. I'll take Fuck a thick yeah. one. Absolutely. Okay. Fuck Hell yeah. yeah. Thank Jason. you very much, Anna. I love you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jason. God, that is that is awesome. I. I feel almost bad taking credit for the intermittent fasting because I feel like I was kind of late to the game because it was around for a while, but it just didn't hit my radar because I was like, why would timing matter? And to be honest with you, it kind of doesn't, but it helps you manage your weight because it's just very hard to consume that much volume of food in a short or shorter window of time. It's it's harder to overeat. And the name of the game, I don't care what anybody tells you. There's no real tricks or anything. The name of the game is just energy balance. Okay. If you are even, because here's the thing, if you could lose weight eating donuts, I know that's probably not a popular thing to say, but scientifically, it is true that you could lose weight eating donuts. If you ate a donut a day and that's all that you ate, you would probably lose weight. Because what, let's just say a donut is what, like 350 calories, something like that, right? If you were to eat 300, even if you had probably three donuts, you know, and that would uh, take you, that's what, 350, 700 1050. So now you're having 1050 a day when you used to have 2000. You're going to lose weight eating three donuts a day. I don't recommend it. I think that you're probably missing out on some key micro and macronutrients, but you would lose body fat. You 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 probably would. So it then what does that tell you? Okay. It's not necessarily what you're eating, but it's how much you're eating how much you are consuming. And I don't mean volume because I'm a volume eater for sure. I know a lot of people who are like, it takes a lot to get me full, but if you eat stuff with a lot of fiber or um, protein, it's going to satiate you so that you don't overconsume in the calorie department. And that's really the name of the game. Anybody can fuck up a quote, good diet. You know, even if you're eating what's, what's like hot right now, that's like healthy, uh, ketogenic, diet that might be harder because again the protein and the fat makes you full but you can over consume it you can and if you do you're probably not going to lose body fat and i and i always like to say like losing body fat because no one is really trying to lose muscle so when we say lose weight what is weight i mean weight could be hair where weight could be bone mass like we're obviously not trying to do that we're trying to preserve muscle mass and everything else bone density what you're trying to lose is body fat Right. And so if you're just over consuming, no matter what it is, even if you're doing a Mediterranean diet, even if you're fucking vegan or you're a carnivore or you're paleo, whatever bullshit you're into, doesn't really matter if you are over consuming. You don't want to over consume uh, many things there. I like to use just like I don't want to call it like biohacking. It's more just like tricks and tips to help you stay in energy balance and one of those tips and tricks is intermittent fasting it just helps you manage your weight because you can't really consume that much in a let's just say five six hour window whatever your you know window is um you could say the same for uh like maybe not breaking your fast with carbohydrates because here's the thing, like I know when people eat, for example, like a cookie or something sweet or something that has a high glycemic index, the reason why people tell you to stay away from those things isn't necessarily because they're horrible for you and they're going to like ruin your health. 
it's you maybe don't want to start your day with a donut because you're not going to feel full for very long and it's probably going to wet your palate like an appetizer and make you want to eat more. It's just going to make you more hungry and that allows you to overconsume. So I would I would advise like if you are going to, you know, eat in the morning or whatever your first meal is, is like have something that's high in protein, high in fiber, right? Because that's going to fill you up. Um, there's nothing that's like especially dirty and horrible about all these other foods. It's just that you tend to over consume calories when you eat them. That is all. So it's real simple. There's no when and when anyone is telling you like all these tricks and trades, you know, unless you're a cheater and you're on Ozempic. I'm just kidding. If it if Ozempic helps you, God bless you. That's great. Um, it's it is kind of. It messes with your hormones a little bit, so you don't get full. That's kind of, I, I don't think, and again, I, I I talked to Dan about it. I don't think it really does anything to your metabolism. I could be wrong, but of everything that I've seen, the GLP-1 memetics don't really touch the metabolism. They don't really, like, burn extra fat. It's just, it messes with the hormones that tell you you are full and hungry. So it suppresses the hunger hormones, like ghrelin and it i think activates the hormones that tell you you're full and satiated like leptin and i think that is the the um pathways that it kind of hijacks and allows you to just not eat so much because you're just not fucking hungry hello who's this it's like david and goliath but lummy's the bad guy lummy and the goats love you carlos Bye. That reminded me of like the ring when the girl was it a guy or a girl that calls it in like seven days. I hated that movie. It was scary. Hello, who's this? It's a Neil Mount Pleasure. How What's you doing? Up, Neil Mount Pleasure. What's going on? Hey, I just want to tell you, I I love all the content you bring, boy. You, they've been on you pretty hardcore the last right? couple weeks. Oh, thank you. And I did and, I did but, I shout you out nine ninety nine. Love your content. I appreciate it. Sorry, let me give you a little horn. Oh there. yeah, definitely. Sorry, I got a lot going yeah, on. But thank we, you, thank you for the nine ninety nine. Oh yeah, definitely. And then I I obviously the reason why I've intermittent fasting is because of you, and has changed the, my whole body. Because I'm down, I've been doing it for a year, and I'm down 70 pounds. Fuck about yeah. About seven inches. I, oh. I look totally, see, a lot, of peop, a lot of people that see me think like the customers that I saw a year ago think I'm sick. Uh, what happened to the fat guy? Yeah. So, which, you know, I only heard it from when you talk about it all the time, which I tell everybody about it. I said, hey, you can try it. And it's a thing that has, I'm going to do the rest of my life. Oh, uh, awesome. because the and then all your guys great shows because unfortunately five weeks ago my dad passed he got a uh, rare form of prostate cancer and dropped like a rock Oof. so all of your great shows have got us de- definitely me through all the crazy time right now but all i just want to be quick and just say hey I I just love everything you bring to the table and keep it up. Thank you. Uh, I'm really sorry for your loss. That that's always hard when a when a parent passes away. Um, and I'm super you know super he, proud he, of you, man. He taught, for, he, yeah, yeah. He, you know what? The uh, he taught me just. Uh, I'm an only child, but just to work, 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 and that's one. I was very lucky that I was blessed with two great parents that awesome. had a work ethic. So you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything. Okay. Take, Take care of yourself. All right. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Poor guy. Shame. Um, I'm so glad that intermittent fasting has really helped for you. I definitely think that my perspective on it has changed quite a bit. I used to think it had more magical powers uh, in terms of uh, hormone manipulation and insulin. And it does, but there, that doesn't, that's really not the, the secret sauce. The secret sauce is that it just helps you manage your weight because it's really hard to overconsume when you're just, when you're fasting for that many hours and you only have a, you know, maybe a four hour window to eat. It's hard to consume whatever, you know, overconsume to 3000 calories or whatever it is that your, that your daily intake usually is so I'm so glad that it fucking works for you guys. I, I definitely use it most days myself. Um, and also it, it's completely when I first started, it was really difficult, but it your body adapts so quickly, it's wild. So within two to three weeks, I mean, I was able to go probably 14, 15, 16 hours. Whereas before, I swear to god, I would eat maybe an hour before bed and then wake up and eat 
immediately, essentially. So I couldn't even go maybe 10 hours, which is crazy because now, I, I mean, the longest I've gone is almost 48. I think I went 45. But a year before that, I couldn't even go 10. Like, it's, it's wild how quickly your body adapts. And it's not as painful and horrific as, you know, you think. And, and I think another thing that intermittent fasting kind of showed me was that, like, you're not going to die. And I know that sounds insane, but I used to be so fucking afraid of hunger. Like, past a certain point, I'm like, I'm just going to go crazy. I, I'm going to just freak out. I'm going to just be like a total bitch. And maybe I am at some points, but, like, I'm just, I, it's just going to be horrific. What am I going to do? I'm going to just sit and be hungry for an hour? I can't do that. You can. You actually can. So whenever I'm feeling a little testy, I always remind myself, like, your body can handle this bitch. You'll be just fine. So I I keep that in the forefront of my brain uh, because sometimes when I'm trying to do like a bit of a longer fast or I just don't have time to eat and I wanted to get a workout in and I go, I can't do this on an empty stomach. I go, your body was made to do this on an empty stomach. Your body was made to go for sometimes weeks without food and survive and hunt and gather. Your body has been crafted by evolution by natural selection to be able to withstand a lack of food for hours, days, weeks, and perhaps even a month without food and survive. So if you have to go an extra 45 minutes, bitch, you'll be fine. I always like to remind myself of those things, that your body was designed to do that and you'll be just fine. And that kind of helps you through it because you're like, I'm, I'm fine. And then once you do it a few times, you're like, I actually am fine. You actually believe the voice in your head. Uh, hello, who's this? Hi, Anna. First time, long time. This is Jeffrey. I just wanted to say I love your show. It gets me through Hey, the Jeffrey. How's everything? Feeling good? <laughs> I'm feeling good, Jeffrey. Thank you so much for calling in. Excellent. I'm saying it's been a wonderful <laughs> week of shows. The podcasts have been fantastic. You are absolutely the one that is the glue that holds the Bubba Radio Network together. You well, are that's a lie, but girl. I appreciate it, Jeffrey. Thank you so no, much. No, no, no. You, you give yourself credit where it's due, girl, because you got it going on and you know it. Wow, Jeffrey. Where are you calling from, Jeff? I'm from Tempest, Arizona. Great. Well, th- well, thank you. What what uh, forum are you listening on? I listen on Rumble. I listen on YouTube. I listen on Twitch. Wow. And I listen on Twitter. I got four platforms going at the same time, girl. I get it done. I'm dropping these numbers. We're getting these these gimmicks going on. That's Oops, fantastic. Black girl. Yeah. Okay. Well. Now you know it's me. I'm a designer in the second snipe. Oh, no! <laughs> this is Joe the Super Mike. Had me fooled. I thought he was Jeffrey the whole time. I don't know why his name was Jeffrey and he was doing the voice of perhaps a, a 40-year-old black woman, but whatever. He fooled me. No? How about this one? There we go. I think that is all for today. Thank you for tuning in. Let's give credit where credit is due, shall we? To start off, Xerxes 999. God bless you, sir. Brian from Philly, a cool 20. John Costica, 49.99. Ned's Hizzer, $20. John Costica with a double snipe, 19.99. And Neil Mount Plasier, $9.99. Lost 70 pounds using uh, intermittent fasting as a tool in his toolkit. You are suffering with uh, your weight. Give it a try. What could it hurt, right? Thank you guys for listening. Bubble 199 tonight, 8 to 10 p.m., I believe on Rumble and Twitch. Uh, DJ Mini Macho Man will be spinning on the ones and twos. I'll be there as well, trying to look less gross. I don't want to say good. Good is a stretch, but less gross for sure. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. I I do it to do this show, man. I really like it. I love hearing um, you guys call in with your, with your tales of 
gyms and intermittent fasting. And I like that this is a... I'm going to just keep talking. I like that this is... No disc, whatever. We'll, we'll go cold. I like that this is just a... This forum is a chance for me to get to know you guys a little bit better and to discuss things that, you know, uh, maybe don't get talked about on the main show. It doesn't really interest people there, perhaps. But over here, we can kind of just talk about whatever we want and just kind of free ball it. So I really appreciate you guys, and I will see you guys. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, at 199 tonight, Rumble and Twitch. Thank you. Have a great weekend, and God bless.